Patrick with the next question. We'll start with you again, Coach Houston. We can make a long list of things where you either have direct control or at least indirect control. Practice schedule, who you offer scholarship to, playing time, all these things. Name image likeness is something that we haven't had for all that long, and a lot of folks don't realize that it's not like you have in your back pocket name image like the rules don't work that way. But however NIL stuff goes, absolutely positively impacts all of your job yeah. descriptions. How have you seen your own school or football program approach this very important name image likeness issue and what do you say when you're asked to give your two cents even though you're not the ultimate decision maker well i think uh you know, no doubt it's it's kind of turned our profession and the college football world upside down uh, you know the combination of name and image likeness uh, and allowing uh, the student athletes to benefit from it uh, along with you know, the change in the transfer rules a couple of years ago has completely changed everything. And, uh, you know, it's uh, something that we uh, struggled with uh, for, for a while. Um, you know, we're not where we want to be yet uh, with that, um, but we're in a lot better shape this year than we were a year ago. And, uh, you know, the, the thing with East Carolina is, you know, in my opinion, we have to approach this, and I'm trying to, you know, say it as much as I can so our fans can hear it, we have to approach this the way we do everything else. It's got to be all hands on deck. Uh, you know, the, the one thing we have at ECU is we have a huge number of very passionate fans. Uh, and the one, the one piece of NIL is, you know, we, we don't need every fan to give $100,000, but we need every fan to participate, you know, whatever they can do. And, you know, if we can do that, then, you know, we can, we can be competitive in this new landscape. Uh, but it is something that keeps you up at night, and uh, it, it concerns you greatly. And, you know, we have a great roster going into the season. I think we'll be highly competitive and have a chance to uh, do what uh, what we want to do in, uh, in the American Conference. But I promise you, December scares the daylights out of me. Yeah. Coach Allen? Uh I refuse to talk about it with my guys. <laughs> We're on a little different level. And, yeah. and if I go out and raise money in the community, or we try to find, you know, bring some money into the university. Um, it's so much we need to do with, with facilities and so many other areas. So, um, unfortunately, I think I'm probably about to, you know, turn a corner and start having conversations. Yeah. Uh, but, young man, if you want to, if you want money, you got to go out and work for it. So you can, you know, that's your, your name, that's your image, that's your likeness. So get on social media, get some clicks. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Fair enough, Coach Brown. Why do I have to follow him? <laughs> um, We've all, we had to learn how to handle COVID because nobody ever done it before. Now we're having to learn how to manage and navigate name, image, and likeness and transfer portal. And it's all different for us. And none of us asked for it. We, we got it given to us. Is it good? Yes. Uh, we, we've got, I could sit up here for an hour and talk to you about things that are happening with young people that are really positive that had never happened before. The roof on the house after the storm uh, one of our players is using some money to help his mom fix the roof so he can stay. Um, one young guy didn't have insurance, and he got hurt outside of football. He didn't have any family insurance. He got some insurance. Tez Walker um, got in a battle with the NCAA. He was able to, to get a, a lawyer. He couldn't have done that in the past because of uh, money from name, image, and likeness. We've got a young man with stage four cancer. Uh, his mom's a police officer been able to phrase some of the costs that we can't pay for for him to have her come up and see him and have a place to stay. So there's so many positive things that are happening that are not being portrayed in the media because we hear about the Lamborghinis, we hear about the uh, exorbitant salaries that are being given to some of these kids. That's not happening with about 97%. Uh, so there are wonderful kids that are still playing. We didn't get it right for a while because we got 28 sports and all 28 sports coaches were calling trying to get money. Also asking for season tickets, also asking for facilities, also asking for money for coaches. So we wore our donors out. We got donor fatigue. And a bunch of my friends said, yeah, I got caller ID, man. I'm not answering anymore. I've had it. <laughs> and they'd say, am I the only donor with money? And you called me for everything. I had 18 calls in the last three weeks. Uh, so what we've done now is we're going to one collective and and it'll be worked with the Rams club, and it'll be much more organized, and, and we'll be aligned a lot better and have a better chance to compete. 
Coach Diaz. Yeah, it's a similar story. I think, you know, in typical how we do things in college athletics, we send the rocket to space unbuilt and then ask, you know, figure out how to build it when it's already in orbit. Um, I have felt in the seven, eight months that I've been at Duke, um, a lot of support. We, like others have mentioned, have really upgraded um, what we're able to do for our guys. Um, but I do think it's important to, um, to drill down the point that, that Mac made is that there is an idea that our sport is becoming transactional. Um, and everything is about just the transaction. And I, I know, I'd imagine everybody at this table got into the coaching for the transformational aspect of what we can do to people at this age. And that can never go away. Um, and I think what's specific to Duke, what I've learned in my time here is for the most part, most of the parents that drop off their sons um, to go to Duke are gonna wanna see their, their children graduate from Duke. Um, so that when, when the kid calls back, calls home and says, Mom, I, you, know, you know, maybe I'm not getting enough playing time. Maybe I want to transfer. Hopefully Mom just hangs up on him and says, uh, forgets his caller ID. Um, and, but you're still under threat at all times. Um, and so our ability for the people behind our program to step up, you win with alignment from top down. Everybody, the coaches get usually more credit than they earn, more blame than they deserve at times. Uh, but to win right now in college football, you've got to have great university administration, which we do at Duke. You've got to have great support from your athletics department, from your fundraising department, like Coach was saying. Uh, but you've got to have great support, like Coach Houston saying. It's got to come from everybody now. Everybody really is a part of the team in this day and age of college athletics. Because um, we have big, big problems we have to solve. We've got more, more problems coming uh, in the 25-26 academic calendar. So I'm excited to be at a place like Duke where you've got some really intelligent people who uh, – who can help solve some of these unknowns that we've got coming forward. Coach D. Uh, you know, it's been a learning process. I think learn by doing is kind of how all of us have gone through this. And uh, our collective has evolved um, since all this started and uh, really into a great place. And our, our newest efforts are very organized, very well thought out. There's uh, incredible people helping. and. Um, I don't know, about a year into it, I was just sick of hearing people complain. Uh, some things are out of our control. And so, you know, at NC State, anyway, we took a different angle and, and let's focus on the solution and let's find people that want to be a part of making this better. And since then, it's it's really taken off. And, and so, you know, our program, One Pack, is, is what our collective is called. And, and uh, they do a great job. And, and it does take everyone. I mean, I've made many public comments uh, similar to what Coach Houston said about the numbers of people uh, being involved in it and how uh, there is strength in numbers when it comes to this and, and it is changing. You know, August 1, you guys have all read about the settlement and, and how these funds are now going to fall under the roof of the university and, and so it's the biggest evolving moment in college athletics that we're all sitting in right now. and. And when this lawsuit continues to get figured out with Title IX and, and then the other things that are going to come on top of it now with our rosters all changing sizes and how that's going to get funded and more scholarships, uh, it's crazy. And, and so what we try to do is the best that we can. Uh, I think all of us are very excited about putting our phones down and coaching football. It starts in six days. And uh, for me, that's the best two hours of the day. I set my phone down in my locker, put my whistle around my, my neck, and I cannot wait to get away from all the other stuff and just help these guys become better football players and spend that time on the grass with them. And, and that's finally about to happen. Because of time constraints, I'm gonna ask you to let